Go ahead. I'm live, baby. <laughs> Seven people. Okay, that's what I like to see. The early, uh, early uh, arrivals. <clears throat> Let's see who's here. The first one that comes up on my screen is Leslie Haft-Sileback. <laughs> Hi, Leslie. Thanks for coming. And then comes uh, Livia and uh, Oklahoma, somebody, Christy in Oklahoma, and Diana, and uh, Sarah Smith McHugh in Wisconsin, Henry from Kentucky. Cool. Okay. We'll get. Oh, we'll get started in uh, at two o'clock uh, East Coast time, which is in four minutes. Somebody say you can hear me. Okay. Just so I know. Let's see who's, who else is here. I see uh, uh, Bobby and Jackson Lynch are here, and uh, Rayleigh in West Virginia, uh, Alana and Connor and Morgan and Ralph, Cesara and Vanessa in Oakland, New Jersey. I know Oakland, New Jersey. Brooklyn and Reagan. And Emma and Maddie. Hi. Hi to Luke and Riley and Ella from New Jersey. Uh, Aiden and Emma in Michigan. Uh, the Druckmann gang. Yay, Druckmans. <laughs> You're always here. <clears throat> um, Seattle, Washington is here. And we can hear you. Good. Thank you for saying that. Uh, DJ and Thomas in Indiana. And Abby in Westfield, New Jersey. We got uh, three minutes to go. And Savannah, and let's see who else. Daniel and Jessica in Alabama. Okay. Uh, uh, Gavin and Jess, can't wait for more. All right, good. Okay. Hi, Sophia from Pennsylvania. We got a first grader, Mark in Colonia, New Jersey. A lot of New Jersey people. I would think you New Jersey people would be sick of me by now. Ryan and Dylan are here. And Declan and Connor, Kaylee, JD from Texas, uh, uh, Clay and Griffin from Florida, who are originally from New Jersey, of course. Uh, and Wyatt, Zachary, Wyatt, did you read Coach Hyatt is a, is a, is a riot? Got to read that one. Uh, Lily and Alex from Connecticut and Bar Harbor, Maine. A lot of people. Spencer, we'll get started in two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, I'll hold this up one more time. <clears throat> Who else is here? Taryn, Bryn, and Devin, and uh, Matt, and Jesse, and Becca, and uh, Jack, and Abby, and uh, Miles, and Lucy. Asher from Pennsylvania, and Braylon from Texas, Gabrielle, and Brendan, and Brogan, and Tyler, and Ryan. Thanks to all of you. We're going to have some fun today. Not that we don't always have fun, but we're going to have special fun today because the book is getting really exciting. Okay, two minutes. Okay. <clears throat> all right, who else? Eli, Leah. And their mom, Amanda, in Beverly, Massachusetts. I've been there. Uh, Jensen and Kinsey and Gregory. Hi, Gregory. And uh, Olivia from Florida. Thanks for tuning in, all of you. We're up to 1,000 people now. I feel like there's 1,000 people surrounding me right now. One minute. Okay. One minute. We get started. It's going to be go time, baby. Okay. Don't touch your face. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'll take a sip. Quick sip. Okay. 159. When the clock clicks to 2, two o'clock, we get started. And that's going to be any second now. So excited. <clears throat> One fifty. Two o'clock. It's time. It's go time, baby. Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming, everybody. My name is Dan Gutman. 
Um, I'm the guy who writes the My Weird School series. And first I want to say happy 10th birthday to Micah today. Happy birthday, Micah. I hope you have a great one. And uh, so uh, this week we've been reading uh, from my book, Dr. Floss is the Boss. And uh, Dr. Floss is number three in the My Weirderest School series. So when we finish this on Friday, uh, then the next book we're going to read is going to be, da 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 Miss Porter is out of order, which is number two. And the week after that, assuming you're still out of school, will be Dr. Snow has got to go, which was the first book in my weirdest school. And uh, we'll take it from there. So uh, right now, let's get back to Dr. Floss. Um, and I will say that uh, just to update you, if you, don't, if you haven't been following, uh, Dr. Floss is a dentist that comes to elementary school to teach the kids about dental hygiene. And she basically teaches the kids that you shouldn't have dental hygiene because Dr. Floss makes more money if you don't brush your teeth and if you eat a bunch of junk food all the time because you'll get cavities. She'll make more money and she'll be able to buy a new car. So that's Dr. Floss's uh, theory of dental hygiene. And in the last chapter which was that we read, which was chapter four, um, Emily had a loose tooth, so the kids went out during recess and they took a piece of dental floss and they tied it to her loose tooth and they tied the other end to a swing in the playground and uh, one of them got on the swing, swung the swing and yanked the tooth out of Emily's mouth. And they did this because otherwise Emily would have gone to Dr. Floss and have to pay a lot of money to get her tooth removed and the kids could do it for free. Okay, so let's get started with chapter five which is titled Plaque Attack. All right, here we go. <sighs> I thought we might get in trouble for pulling out Emily's tooth, but when we went back to Mr. Cooper's class after recess, nobody said a word. Emily and Andrea were just sitting there with their hands folded, like always. Okay, we wasted the whole morning, so now it's time to get to work, said Mr. Cooper. Turn to page 23 in your math books. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Dr. Floss came running into the room. She wasn't wearing her dentist uniform anymore. She was dressed up in some weird superhero costume with a big letter P on the front. And she had a dog with her. It is I, she announced, the evil supervillain Captain Plaque, and this is my dog, Tartar. The dog barked. Cool, we all shouted. Mr. Cooper rubbed his forehead with his fingers and closed his math book. Boo ha 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 ha, shouted Dr. Floss in an evil supervillain voice. Plaque has bacteria that grows when your food mixes with saliva in your mouth. It leads to cavities, and I love cavities. Isn't that right, Tartar? The dog barked again. Ruff! Tartar? Isn't that the stuff you put on fish sticks? I was going to say that, but then something even weirder happened. Another superhero came running into the room. She was wearing a mask and she had a big letter F on the front of her uniform. Oh, and she was carrying a giant inflatable toothbrush. Here's a picture. Oh no, shouted Captain Plaque. My arch enemy is here. Is it the Flash, asked Ryan. No, said Captain Plaque. Is it one of the Fantastic Four, asked Alexia. No, said Captain Plaque. It is I, announced the superhero with the F on her uniform. Fluoride. I fight a constant battle for good dental hygiene. Fluoride, we all asked. Who can tell me what fluoride is, asked Fluoride. Disney World is in fluoride, I said. That's Florida, dumbhead, said Andrea. Fluoride is a mineral that helps strengthen your teeth. It's in toothpaste. 
That's right, said Fluoride. Why can't a truck full of fluoride fall on Andrea's head? If you ask me, that fluoride lady sounded a lot like our librarian, Mrs. Rupee. She's always dressing up in weird costumes. Are you Mrs. Rupee in disguise, I asked. Rupee, said Fluoride, never heard of her. I'm Fluoride, nature's cavity fighter. Plaque is bad for you and tartar is hard plaque that can grow on your teeth. It comes from the things you eat and drink. That's why it's so important to have a healthy diet to prevent cavities. Cavities are good things, shouted Captain Plaque. They give dentists lots of work so they can buy new cars. Isn't that right, Tartar? The dog barked. Ruff! I thought Tartar was that stuff you put on fish sticks, I said. That's Tartar sauce, dumbhead, said Andrea. Those things should really have different names. Tartar and I are here to destroy your teeth, shouted Captain Plaque. Not if I can help it, shouted Fluoride. Stand back, kids. That's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. Fluoride hit Captain Plaque over her head with her giant inflatable toothbrush. Then Captain Plaque karate chopped Fluoride. It's time for another Plaque attack, shouted Captain Plaque. No, shouted Fluoride. Captain Plaque is whack. Watching the two of them fight was cool. <laughs> Meanwhile, Tartar just stood there barking. Ruff! And here's the picture of the, the big fight. Oh, and by the way, there's also a picture on the cover of the book. Okay. <clears throat> I don't approve of all this violence said Andrea. It's a bad influence on children. What do you have against violins, I asked. Not violins, Arlo, violence. I was just yanking Andrea's chain. Captain Plaque and Fluoride were going at it pretty good. Finally, Fluoride knocked Captain Plaque down with her giant toothbrush. Everybody cheered. Hit the road, Plaque, said Fluoride, and don't you come back no more. Ask your parents to explain that, or maybe your grandparents. Captain Plack slinked out of the room with Tartar, and we cheered some more. Oh, here's a picture of Captain Plack slinking out of the room. Disgraced, a loser. <laughs> okay. Fluoride gave each of us one of those little timers that have sand in them and told us we should always brush our teeth for two minutes. I will fight Plack and Tartar Wherever I find them, said Fluoride. Farewell, I must take my leave. Why would she take leaves? We don't have any leaves to take. There's no tree in the classroom. Fluoride took a bow and we all clapped again. Then she climbed out the window. That was weird. Okay, that's chapter <laughs> five. Are you guys ready for chapter six? Say the magic word. Okay, here we go. Chapter six, which is titled, The Tooth Fairy. All right. A few minutes later, Dr. Floss came back in the room. She wasn't dressed up like Captain Plack anymore. I'd like to introduce a surprise guest who is going to read you a story, she told us. Please give a warm welcome to my good friend, the Tooth Fairy. Some big lady came dancing into the room. She was wearing a yellow tutu, wings, high heels, and a crown on top of her long blonde hair. In her hand was a magic wand with a star at the end of it. Here's a picture by Jim. The Tooth Fairy. Well, I thought she was a lady anyway. She looked a lot like our principal, Mr. Klutz, but he has no hair at all. I mean, none. Mr. Klutz would look good with long blonde hair. Hi, boys and girls, the Tooth Fairy said. 
the Tooth Fairy sounded a lot like Mr. Klutz, too. You have a pretty low voice for a fairy, I said. Are you sure you're not Mr. Klutz in disguise? Klutz, said the Tooth Fairy, adjusting her hair. Never heard of him. I'm the Tooth Fairy. I'm so glad you could join us on National Dessert Day, said Dr. Floss. Please tell the kids what you do. Well, said the Tooth Fairy, when a kid loses one of their baby teeth and leaves it under their pillow at night, I sneak into their bedroom and replace the lost tooth with money. I wasn't buying any of that. Neither was anybody else. How do you sneak into people's houses? asked Neil. I, uh, climb in through the chimney, said the Tooth Fairy, like Santa Claus. Hey, would you kids like to hear a story? Don't you get dirty climbing through people's chimneys? asked Ryan. What if somebody lives in an apartment building? asked Michael. This is a really fun story, said the Tooth Fairy, taking out a book. Isn't it, isn't it illegal to break into people's houses without permission? asked Alexia. I uh, never thought about it, admitted the Tooth Fairy. She rubbed her forehead. Did anyone ever call the cops on you? I asked. Did you ever go to jail? No, replied the Tooth Fairy. I just give money to kids when their baby teeth fall out. And by the way, if your tooth is a perfect tooth, I'll give you a dollar. If your tooth is all decayed, I'll only give you a nickel. So take good care of your baby teeth. Everybody started buzzing, but not really because we're not bees. A nickel, that's it. The Tooth Fairy is cheap. Hey, the more teeth fall out, the more money I pay, said the Tooth Fairy. I might as well knock all my teeth out at once, said Ryan. Ka-ching! Look, do you kids want to hear the story or not? asked the Tooth Fairy. I was still pretty sure the Tooth Fairy was Mr. Klutz. He started to read us a picture book. Once upon a time, there was a little boy who was afraid of going to the dentist and blah, 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 blah. That's the sound that grown-ups make when they talk. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. What a snooze fest. That story went on for a hundred million minutes. I thought I was going to die from old age. It was about some kid who was afraid of going to the dentist. And on the last page of the story, he suddenly gets confident and he's not afraid of going to the dentist anymore. Gee, what a surprise. Like we couldn't predict that was going to happen. Hey, hey, I heard that Emily lost a baby tooth today, said the Tooth Fairy. Emily, will you come up here? Emily ran up to the front of the room. The Tooth Fairy leaned forward to Emily a dollar bill. But that's when the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. The Tooth Fairy's long blonde hair fell off. The Tooth Fairy was completely bald. Here's a picture, Jim's picture. You are Mr. Klutz, I shouted. No, I'm the Tooth Fairy, Mr. Klutz yelled, and then he went running out of the room. That was weird, and Mr. Klutz is nuts. But he gave me a great idea. There should be a hair fairy who sneaks around in the middle of the night giving money to men when their hair falls out. Ka-ching! If there was a hair fairy, my dad would be rich. Well, that was fun, said Dr. Floss. I have to go to another class now, but I'll see you kids later at my favorite time of day. When is your favorite time of day? Andrea asked. 2.30, she said. Get it? Tooth hurdy? That's another dental joke. Everybody laughed, even though she didn't say anything funny. Well, kids, that's the end of chapter six. Chapter seven is titled... Open wide and say, ah, but we're going to save that one for tomorrow. So tomorrow we'll read seven and eight 
and then we're going to finish this book on Friday. And uh, until then, I hope you guys are keeping safe, washing your hands, and reading like crazy. I will see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Bye now.